All right, guys, this is the Excel challenge solutions. So we start off with the green triangle that you see here on the upper left hand corner. Right. And when you click on the exclamation mark, it'll tell you that basically there's an inconsistent formula. We can take a look at the formulas on column N by hitting control tilde control tilde is just the tilde is just the symbol on the left of the number one so if you do that you will see the, all of the formulas and here you can see that the cell in question we have b7 colon l7 and that's not correct it should be m7 so what we can do to correct that we can just simply autofill and correct that problem like so so anytime you see a a green triangle uh, on the top corner of your cell, keep in mind that that means that it's a uh, inconsistent formula. Okay, moving on. So over here, the total, we've done this before, auto sum, but notice that when we do auto sum for this, uh, it's B3 to B10, and we should be selecting b3 to b9 instead so just use the cursor select b3 to b9 and hit enter right so that's uh, that's for the sum next we're going to use average so click on the triangle that you see on the right side of auto sum hit average and uh, drag the box over and select the appropriate cells b3 to b9 would be correct and I'm going to do the same thing for the rest of it. So highest refers to the highest value that you get. You uh, can use max to find out the largest number. Right, so I'm going to do the same thing here. So that's max, B3 to B9. And in this case, I'm going to do minimum. Min function for the lowest value, as you can guess what that one does. b3 to b9 as well um, realize that you can also change b3 to b9 uh, by just typing it in if you want okay so quantity right quantity is being able to count all of the items that you see highlighted in january for the month of january so many of you just typed in the number after counting one two three four five six seven and then you just left it as the number seven like that now in Excel, we try to avoid placing numbers uh, when we can, right? We use formulas, we use functions as much as possible. So in this case, we're going to use the count function. Again, auto sum to the, um, to the right hand side, just click on the triangle and we're going to find count numbers and we're going to use that to count the items for that particular month. Okay, so that's done for January. And once you've done that for January, realize that I'm still at the control tilde function. That's why you can see all the formulas. So to remove that, just control tilde again, and now you don't see the formulas, you actually see the results. Okay, and that's for January. Once all the formulas are correct, you can select all of them and do our magic autofill to just autofill everything and voila you are done right a bit of tidying up we can select all of this and change it to currency and everything except for quantity for obvious reasons i'm going to change it to currency as well okay so that's for expenses let's move on to the next segment in our Excel challenge. So in this part, you are asked to um, sort the names in alphabetical order, right? So if I do this, if I select all of the names and then I click on sort and sort alphabetically from A to Z, what I get is a warning. So that warning will tell you, well, basically, um, what it says here is that you need to expand the selection. So Billy, for instance, here, 
will be replaced by Albert because Albert is an A, right? But Billy's score, which is 74, is going to remain on B3, and we don't want that. We want Billy's score to follow Billy as he moves along the column. So here we are going to select both all related fields. So imagine if column B was uh, um, there are NRIC numbers or the, it could be uh, their telephone numbers or their addresses, right? And all of the names that are related to these fields should also follow them. So in this case, it's just scores. We're going to do the, oops, sorry. We're going to do the same thing. Select all of this and head over to sort. This time let's sort and you, you realize that there's no error at all. Uh, another thing to note is that on column C, C3 in particular, you see that the value 0 0.37, right, which has the formula equals 74 divided by 200, um, this value did not change, right? Earlier on, you can see that this, um, this answer here uh, refers to 74 divided by 200, uh, and it was correct. And this is the reason why in Excel we do not ever use numbers. We try to use our cell references. In other words, we use the name of the cells instead of the numbers themselves, the values themselves. So over here, to correct it, if I had placed B3 and then I divide, let's divide that by B2, right? I still get 0 0.37, but the formula is different. And what that has in effect is that now, if I sort it alphabetically, let me sort that alphabetically, now realize that C3, C3's value, C3's answer is dynamic. It changes according to um, the cell references values. Okay. So now obviously all I need to do is just autofill the rest of it, right? Now this should scream at you as an error because Obviously, what I'm trying to get at over on this side, oh, hang on, mm, yeah, sorry, D you didn't see that. So here it's percentages, right? So um, I'm trying to get the percentages of this. So right now it's in decimal points. Um, you would realize that anything above 1.0 would be in incorrect because you can't score more than 100% for a test for obvious reasons. So anything higher than one um, would be wrong. So in this case, all of these, these two here would be wrong and here would be wrong. And so let's see what's going on here. So to, let's control tilde to look, take a look at the formulas. We can see that um, the first one's correct, B3 divided by B2, but the second one is B4 divided by B3, which is wrong because it's 71 divided by 57. It should be 71 divided by 200. So it should be B4 divided by B to again and in fact it should be b2 for all of the formulas right so here we have a situation where the first cell reference is a relative cell and the second cell reference needs to be a absolute cell we call it absolute cells and in fact in the instructions when you scroll to the bottom you will see that i actually left that hint there for you uh, to try and figure out relative cells and absolute cells. So B2 is supposed to be an absolute cell. You can think of an absolute cell as a cell that is in a fixed position, right? So the way to go about doing that is to change B2 to a fixed cell or an absolute cell. We hit the F4 key and you can see the dollar signs will appear. So when you hit the F4 key once, you get um, dollar sign B, dollar sign 2. That fixes the B column and the second row, so the number two row, right? If I have a B dollar sign two, this just fixes the row. And the next one, I'm just hitting F4 again. This one only fixes um, the column, column B, right? And this one goes back to normal relative cells. So B2 to B, uh, sorry, dollar sign B and dollar sign two is what we require. Hit enter for that. And now we autofill. So let's do the autofill. Let's see. Okay, like so. Control tilde. And all we need to do now is just select and convert it to percents. So there you have it. 
So that is, so apparently nobody passed for this test. But if you change, if you decide to change the score to, let's say, 100, right, of course, everything should be dynamic as it is in Excel. And there you have it. Now you get a different result. Okay, you can play around with the results and so and so forth. Mm -hmm. This one doesn't make sense. Okay, moving on. So the third and final one. This is the culmination of all of the skills that you have learned so far in Excel. Here, let's, uh, let's take a look. Let's do a control tilde. When you, whenever you see a new spreadsheet, the first thing you, you should do is hit control tilde so that you can see all the different formulas that are already in there. For example, if you were to be given this spreadsheet for the very first time, let's say you've never seen this spreadsheet before, um, a good idea would be to hit control tilde just to see what's going on under the hood so that it's easier for you to understand. Right, so back here, we're going to hit control tilde. We can see that there are some formulas that have been given to us already. For example, the subtotal before tax is 6.7 times 3, which comes from this cell times this cell. Now, obviously, this one is wrong. We should use cell references as per the last two examples. So we're going to use the cell references as proper C4 times, if I can find asterisk. There you go times that. Right. That's one way of doing it. The other way of doing it is to use the product. So I just uh, typed in prod and then you can see here uh, the remainder. So just double click on that. Select the first cell that you want, comma, select the second cell that you want and then hit enter. So realize that when you use a function like product, uh, we enter the numbers that we want to uh, multiply C5 and B5. In this case, we put a comma here, we do not actually put the operand um, asterisk, right? Whereas in this case, it's a formula. So the difference, difference between a formula and a function. And for the rest of it, we can just auto fill uh, as such. Okay, I'm just leaving the rest of this here for, your, uh, for you to see the difference between, uh, between them. This is, of course, incorrect. And you should change this one uh, on D3. But for me, I'm just going to leave it there for you to see. So the total for that is auto sum, and you know how to do that already. So I'm just going to continue. Let's move on. Let's get some space. So over here to get to, uh, to get tax, we use the um, the values in D three times the seven uh, percent, and seven percent is just the GST, which is somewhere down the aisle. Okay, zero point zero seven right there, which is an H three. Okay. So let's do that. So let's do an equal sign and put D4 times again. You can use product if you want to. You can just go ahead and try product instead of using uh, a formula. And over here, that's, that's H3, but realize that H3, if we continue on with an autofill, it'll be a D5 multiplied by an H4. And H4 is nothing. There isn't anything here on H4. So we need to use an absolute cell. Right, so absolute cells are with um, with dollar signs. So let's hit an F4, and uh, there you have it. That's your uh, absolute cells. Hit enter for that, and I'm just going to auto fill the rest of it, except for the last one. And that's the total. So I'm just going to hit auto sum for that. Now, if I'm going too fast, you can always pause the video. Um, or, or rewind the video and, 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 and look through it again. All right, so moving on. Subtotal after tax. Uh, this one is basically your um, subtotal before tax plus the tax itself. So let's do that. Equals, and that is this value, which is D4 plus my after tax. So that value, and I can get that answer, or I could simply use auto sum. So of course, if I use auto sum, Excel is going to assume that it wants me to add these two numbers, which is incorrect at this point in time. Sometimes Excel gets it right, sometimes it doesn't. In this case, it doesn't, so we need to correct it. So be careful uh, when you use auto sum um, and don't take it for granted that it's always going to be um, the right values that you want. So in this case, D5, E5, let's do that, and we can auto... Um, Autofill the rest of it. Okay, that's great. 
head over here, realize that you don't want to autofill um, this one right down here. You don't want to do that, obviously. That's not the way to do it. For this case, it's the summation of all of these values of the F column right there. So that's F3 to F13. Okay, moving on to the next column. So percentage of the total. Now, percentage of total is basically asking you what uh, percentage does each item um, comprise of uh, against the total, which is this guy over here. So um, to get that the equal sign, hit this value, which is F3, divided by, let's find the divide, divided by F14, right? now. Before we move on, F14 has to be fixed. Realize that it'll move on to, F, uh, it'll, when you autofill, it'll go from F3 to F4, but F14 will also uh, carry forward. It'll move on to F15, and that's not what we want. We want it to be fixed at F14, so we're going to use F4 here to just um, give us the dollar signs. In other words, absolute cells. Give that, and you can now autofill confidently. Okay. So I'm going to do control tilde to remove the the view of all the formulas, right? To basically this is the the default view. Uh, everything looks great. We are going to change all of this to um, currency. So let's just select all of that and change to currency. And over here, I'm going to change it to percent. Right, so you can just do that simply by hitting the percent key or I'm just going to select percentage over here. And I realize that um, the percent sign is already here, but my point in asking you to change to percent is that I need you to know how to change um, cell formats. Right, It's the same as going to right click and clicking the format cells on this side. Okay, so that concludes the Excel challenge. So good job, um, guys, for, for, for taking on the challenge and for trying out um, this challenge. See you in the next lesson. Cheers.